Hello, everybody. I'm Alex. I'm Cody. From Slow Your Roll, and we're here to talk about The Monk, but not D&D like normal. We're talking about DC20 RPG, this great new system that's coming out, and you guys can even have the chance to be a part of making it. DC20 RPG is a game currently in development, so right now it's pre-alpha. It's being developed by the Dungeon Coach and his company, and I've been lucky enough to be a small part of the team involved in that, so I got a little bit of a sneak peek on stuff. So... Today's video is going to be specifically some of the awesome things that you can do with the DC20 RPG Monk. And as Alex said, the Dungeon Coach is taking a bunch of input from his patrons on Patreon as well. So if you guys wanted to have input and just support the process, you could support him there too. And if you guys want to know all the nitty gritty specifics of the Monk, make sure to check out the Dungeon Coach's video, link in the description. Yes. We're probably going to say that a few times. <laughs> yeah, for sure. In fact, you should start there because he's going to give the full layout and then we'll go into builds. And you just want to say this before we start Huff. We're really only going to be referencing the things that are open to the public. And some things are subject to change, so just keep that in mind. So the DC20 RPG Monk gets all the stuff that the 5e Monk gets, pretty much. And then a few extra things on top of that. And as I'm sure you may have already seen from his video, a lot of the good stuff you get comes way earlier, so you can actually play the class fantasy of a Monk as soon as you start playing. A hundred percent. And when you get to level two, you pick up a couple extra level features that you won't see in D&D for quite some time. One other quick thing to consider, the marshals in this game get a special resource called stamina. This might change too, but as of right now, stamina is basically just something that makes you able to do more things that are a little more special than just weapon attacks. Yeah, like a heavy crush. Exactly. But moving on from there, we're going to focus on what is maybe the coolest new feature for the monk, stances. Yes. This is something that's been missing from the D&D character's fantasy for a long time. You're telling me that I can't go into crane stance? Come on. Right. And you should get some benefits from that, of course, right? <laughs> so we're going to be breaking down a few builds you can make with the stances you can get early on, we're talking level one, level one and level two, you can make some awesome builds with just stances. So we are now going to hit you with that. So in DC 20 RPG, there are a couple of stances that you can pick right at the beginning when you're making a monk. And these stances are your fighting styles. So you're gonna have something like the mongoose stance, which would end up giving you plus one damage while you're flanked. Not only that, when you make an attack check against a monster using an unarmed strike, you can use that same attack to make another attack towards another monster that has you flanked. So it's bam, bam, mongoose. So this will seriously help you maximize your action economy, but you mentioned it's a plus one damage. In this game, damage is scaled way back. So plus one damage is actually really significant. Which I actually think is really cool. If you think to yourself, wow, these numbers are getting huge in D&D, &D, you're not gonna think that here. So I said you could pick two stances. So the first of my stances is definitely Mongoose. I'm a squirrely little guy, but <laughs> we've got the turtle stance next. And once you get to where you're going, you're not moving. The turtle stance gives you advantages on checks against being moved or strength checks. And not only that, everybody, you get a plus two to your damage reduction. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I wish I didn't just get hit? This kind of helps. So that means if you do get hit and you take damage, if it's two damage or less, then you're actually not taking any damage. Making the turtle stance an awesome defensive option for really any build, but we're having it follow up the mongoose stance. Good old sword and shield combination here. Exactly. So at level two in the monk in this game, you actually get to pick up another stance. You'll have three altogether. So let's take this build we already had, the mongoose and turtle, and add the gazelle stance. The gazelle stance gives you plus one movement speed and you get to ignore difficult terrain and it gives you plus one jump. So you could really start your whole situation before you go into mongoose with gazelle to make sure you get exactly where you want to be. You can put yourself in the middle of being flanked and then do a bunch of damage. With this stance combination here, you're 100% walking around in gazelle all the time. A fight breaks out you get there quicker than most of your party should be able to move. After you do that, break out into Mongoose and hit as many people as you can, then we stick it out with Turtle so they can't even hit you. 
I love this combination. The perfect, well-rounded build right there. So moving into the second build, we're gonna start with the Bull Stance. This allows you to deal one bludgeoning damage every time you push or knock over an enemy. On top of that, if you take the shove action, you can actually move with the target as you're pushing them, which is a really cool flavor thing, but we're gonna focus on the ability to knock people down and do damage while you're doing it. Because if you knock an enemy down, then they're prone, and you're a melee fighter, which is really good news for you. You get to attack them with advantage now. Absolutely. And when you knock somebody down, you don't usually get to inflict damage upon them when you're doing that. So it's a twofer. So moving from the bull stance, you can go into the bear stance, which is as awesome as it sounds. And you actually get the right to bear arms. Bleh. So with the bear stance, you do get plus one damage anytime that you do a heavy hit, Bleh. which is five over their physical defense or armor class, or you get an extra plus two damage on crits Bleh. on top of the extra damage you would already get for critting. So this is all really good news because you're attacking this prone person you just did damage to by knocking them prone with advantage, upping your chances to get heavy and brutal hits. And worst case scenario, somehow you miss, you actually get advantage again if you miss your target. With bear and bull stance being the heaviest damage dealers that you can sometimes pick, what would really complement these kinds of stances? And I say, Cobra stance. All right, let's be serious. You're gonna be in the middle of the fray. You're gonna get hit. So what better effect to have than when you get hit, you have advantage on hitting the person that just hit you. Some payback is in order. Not only that, you're not just getting bonuses when you're getting hit, you're getting bonuses when they miss. If they miss you, you don't just get advantage this time, you can spend one action point to do a reaction attack. And if you've got the AP for it, I can only imagine how many enemies are gonna get throat punched. So a quick review for this sick build. When you start with the bull stance, you do damage to an enemy while knocking them down. Now that they're prone, you switch over to bear stance. With extra damage, you are likely to hit them more often and harder. Then you switch directly into Cobra, even if they try to swing at you while they are prone, they have disadvantage and they'll probably just miss you so you can take a reaction to hit them again. It's really just mean, you're just a bully. When it comes to martial combat, a lot of utility really does come from pushing and pulling your enemies and getting in and out of range quickly. And there's not a lot of ways that you can do that without a heavy cost of opportunity attacks. Until today. With the wolf stance, you're able to take the attack action and on a hit, you can move one space more. You also happen to have advantage on opportunity attacks and your opponents have disadvantage on opportunity attacks. So you don't even have to worry about getting to where you need to be or out of where you are. If that doesn't just outright take care of your problems, then we've got the scorpion stance to top it right off. Now that you are able to get one space away from this opponent, whenever you switch into scorpion stance, somebody who enters into your melee range, you get to opportunity attack them really flipping it around on them. And if they just decided not to come at you for some reason, you can just spend one AP to increase your range. They just centered your melee range and they didn't even move. Punish them. This is an awesome offensive combo. And if for some reason your whole little cat and mouse game doesn't really play out or wolf and scorpion game, whatever, then you, of course, at level two, could pick up the Mantis stance. And not just because it's the last one we haven't covered. Right. <laughs> so regardless, they're not playing your whole Wolf Scorpion game. At this point, just jump into the Mantis stance. This gives you advantage on all martial checks to grapple someone or even escape being grappled. And not only that, but if you have a creature grappled, you actually get one extra action point at the beginning of your turn. To use against grapples, which is kind of like having a free restrain right here. I actually actually really like this build. It might just be my favorite. When you've got the wolf to hit enemies and then get out of the way, and you can change straight into scorpion stance to get another hit in when they try to come back at you. And if all of that doesn't work, just grapple them up with the mantis stance and tell your barbarian to go to town. And I do kind of want to roll right into some honorable mention stances. These stances work for every single type of monk. There are a couple of stances that are really niche, kind of like the bull stance, but you're going to want that for pushing things around. But when it comes to things like the gazelle stance, I think I would pick the gazelle stance for every single time I get to level two. You get extra movement. You can ignore difficult terrain. You have advantage on agility stuff. 
no one's gonna touch you and you can use this for anything. The gazelle stance is awesome. And don't forget, you can actually use these stances, you know, mechanically outside of combat too. They aren't restricted to just combat stuff. Nice. I am so eating grass. And that's before you even get in the stance. And then the next honorable mention, again, a stance you can take with any build regardless, especially if you've already got the two you like, pick this one up at level two when you get your third one. That is the turtle stance. It is always going to be a good option to make you a stone solid force on the battlefield. If someone hits you, realistically, it's hardly going to hurt. And you can couple this with taking the dodge action or whatever else too, to be even more sure that you're going to be very defensive. Yeah, because monks aren't traditionally tanks in any regard, but now you're the evasive tank. You can do this. With the last of our honorable mentions, we've got the mantis stance. For basically any martial class ever, it's been good to be able to grapple somebody without disadvantages to it. It's kind of hard to build that character fantasy in Dungeons and Dragons, but this time it's definitely gonna shine. Honestly, I could see a lot of people making a monk, not even because they wanted to play a monk, but because they wanted to be a really good grappler. Mm -hmm. But, and if, okay, wow, that was weird. Turn to say, but, and then, and came right, out right, right after. Right. But, and, so, because, therefore. So if any of this stuff sounds cool to you guys, you've got to check out the Dungeon Coach. Link over here or down below. But don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe if you liked our video, and make sure to leave your favorite type of builds in the comments as well. You know what else you'll find down there? The merch. Yeah, I heard your wardrobe isn't completely slow your roll merch yet, and that's probably an issue. So you can fix that, and the link's down there. But actually, big thanks to the Dungeon Coach. It has been awesome to be a part of this, even in the slight way that I have been, and for the permission, you know, to let us do this video, and just gloat about how awesome this game is seriously gonna be. And again, if you wanted to be a part of it. The link for the Dungeon Coach's Patreon will be in the description below. He does all kinds of awesome stuff there. Even aside from DC20, he does like monthly PDFs and a bunch of cool stuff. So check that out, support the guy, and let's get playing games for real. So we will see you guys around. Bye. Bye-bye.